Salty the Dockyard Diesel, another absolute favorite character of mine from the TV series. Like Arthur, like Spencer, he's another one that I think fits into the Railway Series universe pretty seamlessly. Like those two, I have my own headcanon for Salty, and my model of him reflects that. Let's jump into that before we talk about the model itself. Salty is a British Railways Class 07 diesel, built by Rustin and Hornsby. He was introduced in the sixth season premiere, Salty's Secret, where he came to Sodor via rail to work at Farquhar Quarry, and later Brendam Docks. Salty wears the number 2991 on his cab sides, which is actually a real number of a Class 07, and one that is actually still around today. The real 2991 was put into service in 1962, where it worked at Southampton Docks, alongside the rest of the class. In 1973, it was withdrawn and went into industrial use at Eastleigh Works, where it still works in service to this very day. 2991, the real Salty, is still alive and with us, and painted in BR Blue wearing its tops number 07007. However... That's not how things happened in my version. As we all know, Tidmouth Harbor is THE harbor on the island of Sodor in the books. Not Knapford, not Brendam. Tidmouth is the island's biggest port. It's where all the big ships go. It's where the Flying Kipper starts. It's where all the keys are. It gets shockingly little attention in the books, only appearing a couple times. But we know it's big. I always thought it was strange Audrey never talked about a potential docks engine that was kept on specifically to shuffle the wagons on the keys. I suppose the Tidmouth pilot engine would have managed the dock work, so this would have been Percy for a while, and then later Duck. As we all know, Duck left Tidmouth in 1967 to run his branch line, leaving Tidmouth Station and the harbor without a pilot engine. I explained before that I like to think Arthur took over for Duck for a short while, as he arrived on Sodor around the same time. So they managed fine at first, but as the growing harbor saw more ships come in, it was clear an engine would be needed solely for the Duck's work. The Fat Controller sought his options, getting in contact with friends around the region. The year was 1973, and Southampton Docks had recently withdrawn one of their diesels, number 2991. Still in good condition, the Fat Controller snatched him up for a good bargain and had it run up to Sodor under its own power. So you see, 2991 did leave Southampton in 1973 and did indeed go into industrial use as it did in real life, just in a different location. The diesel was trialed at Farquhar Quarry for a short stint and then went to Tidmouth, where he was repainted into the red livery of the Tidmouth Harbor Board. They kept the original number on him, and put him to work. The dock workers eventually nicknamed the Diesel Salty, and later had the name painted on him. Salty was a hard worker, and managed the shunting with ease. He manages the wagons so well that the dock workers are convinced he just has a way with them, almost as if he puts them in a trance of some sort. While they all know that engines can't really talk, they swear sometimes they can hear the Diesel singing. Okay, let's get into the model now. To be completely honest, Salty was one of the easiest models in the collection to make. Helgen produces a BR Class 07 in a variety of liveries. I don't particularly like Helgen. I think their steam engines are overpriced and are far too flimsy. Little detail parts break off these so easily. But their diesels, however, are fire. The 07 is a glorious little model. A lot of solid detail for a fair price. Just like I do for most of my models, I photoshopped what I wanted Salty to look like before painting anything. I painted him in a solid red with wording on him. I thought about giving him the same chevron stripes as the prop, but I came to the conclusion that it would be too difficult to paint, and I kind of liked how simple the solid red looked. I purchased a BR blue one, with the intention of keeping the yellow and black wasp stripes on it. When it came to painting, I took the whole body apart and covered the wasp stripes with masking tape. I primed the exposed parts, and then painted them with a brick red. The same brick red I would later use for James, in fact. 
And once that dried, I picked out his details, like the handrails, in silver. And that's basically it for the painting part. Next big step was the lettering. Most industrials have a lot of lettering on them, and I think that's what makes them look so industrial. I wanted to keep his number on the cab sides, just like the real engine, and I wanted his name on him somewhere, so I put that on the rear to make it look like an afterthought the dock workers put on him when they nicknamed him after the fact. I wanted to show Salty's new owners on the livery somewhere too, so I put a big THB on his cab sides, short for Tidmouth Harbor Board. So fun fact, I originally wanted to use Tidmouth Harbor Company, but I quickly realized the acronym for that would probably turn heads, so I changed it to Board instead. All the lettering and numbers here are from a 1948 BR numbering sheet from Hatton's. I was fortunately able to make out Salty and THB from the British Railways lettering given on the sheet. The last step was the funnest part of all, the weathering. Salty as a prop is so fun because of his fun weathering. A completely clean Salty just looks so wrong to me. He is the definitive grimy, hardworking industrial engine. He needs to be grimy. While most of my steam engines have coal weathering on them, Salty was a little different. He would need oil stains. So what I did was put a paintbrush in very watered down black paint, and then painted streaks all over him, being careful to put them in places that would make sense, like oil dripping from vents and the like. I did this several times, waiting each time for every coat to dry before adding another layer. Sometimes I would thicken the paint and use less water or more water to have a varying effect. I was worried I'd mess up on the weathering, but I discovered there's no real reason to be worried at all, because he's supposed to look messy. If you mess up, just paint more weathering over it, the end result will look fine. This is my first time using this sort of method for weathering, and I think it turned out pretty dang good. And there's Salty, one of my favorite models, if I'm being honest. He's one of my favorites because I think he's pretty unique. I don't think anyone has ever done a realistic take on Salty, as far as I've seen. Maybe someone has by this point. But that's not even the best part. My favorite thing about my Salty is that he has working lights. The Helgen 07s are honestly great little models with so much detail. I recommend getting one just to have, even if you don't want to make salty. They're just fun. And there you have it, folks. A very easy model to make, and a perfect candidate for you if you ever want to try out your weathering skills. Salty, tell us another one do. Now that's done, I'd like to take this opportunity to showcase some new friends that just arrived that will be joining the Tugs Train's fleet very soon. Scotland is calling. <laughs>